All right, welcome to section 2.2, .2, the slope of a line. So the first question is, what is the slope of a line and how do we read it on the graph? So this is sort of a um, very generic definition. If you want the real one, once again, read your book. So the slope of a line is basically the way it tilts or changes as we look at our graph. Now you have to be really careful because the way you look at your graph is important. So think about the way you read a sentence, right? You start from what side? The left, and then you read to the right. That is very important when you read a graph. So if you have, let's say, a little graph like this, and we have a line starting here and shooting off in this direction, where we decide to start reading for our slope is important. We always start reading from left to right, just like how we read sentences. So as we start from the left and we move to the right with our eyes, our question is, does my line look like it's heading upwards or does it look like it's heading downwards? And the answer is my line looks like it's heading upwards. So that means the change or the way it tilts is moving upwards. So it has a positive slope as they move from the left to the right. A different example would be if I had a line like this blue one. As I read from the left to the right, this line looks like it's slowly tilting downwards. So that would be a line that has a slope that would be considered negative. So the downwards would be a negative slope. Let me change that color. Downwards is a negative slope and upwards is a positive slope. All right. So let's see. Ways to find slope. So more than likely, you have seen slope before in your previous classes, but as always, it's good to review these things, or just refreshers. So ways to find slope. Well, three main ways. And it depends on what we are given, how we decide to find our slope. So let's say you are given two points that are on a line. So you have a set of points and a set of points. How do we find slope? Well, we're going to use a formula. We use that little lowercase m, which means slope. So m equals... And we're going to take our y values, oh sorry, that shouldn't be an x down there, that should be a 1. We'll take our y values and subtract them from each other. And we'll divide that by our x values and subtract them from each other. Now, the textbooks are slightly different in how they set this up. Some of them have the sub 2s first and some have the sub 1s first. It does not matter, as long as your sub 1s are over each other and your sub 2s are over each other, then you've done it correctly. This is basically the change in our y values over the change in our x values. So reading the change from our x and a change in y. So that little triangle I drew there is called the delta, which basically means change, the change in. All right, next. If we're given an equation, which we have seen now, y equals mx plus b. So if we have an equation and we're asked, find the slope, how do we do it? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite your equation in this format, where you solve for y and get the x's together and then your numbers on the end. And then you're going to look at the number next to the, y, to the x. Sorry, You're not going to include the x. You're going to look at the number next to the x, that little m, and that would be your slope. Now lastly, one of the ways is if you're given a graph, how would we find the slope? Well, basically, we're going to be using the same concept here. m is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So if you have your graph, for example, and you have a point here, and a point here on your line, your line whoop, crosses through, what you're going to do is you're going to count how many x values you move and put that for your number of x values and then count the number of y values you have to move for the top. Now when you move up for y, that's positive. If you move down for the y values, that's negative. If you move forward for the x values, that's considered positive. If you have to count backwards for the x values, that's considered negative. Once again, if you need a refresher on this or if you need further clarification, please come by in office hour. Example 1. Find the slopes of the red and blue line using a different slope method for each line. Okay. Well, one method I know we're not going to use is the equation method. Why? Well, we don't have an equation for either of these. So I know we won't be using that method. Which leaves the other two methods if I'm given two points or if I have a graph. And notice we have both of those options here. Sorry, you might hear my dog howling in the background. Okay, so we have the two methods using points and counting slope. Let's do a different one for each. So for the red line, I'm going to use m equals 
y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Does it matter that I chose that one? Mm, no. They both have points. Both of these lines have points. But I just need to make sure I use one of the methods for each line. So let's go ahead. Um, the points on my red line are 0, 6, and negative 2, 0. Let's go ahead and name these. So I'll go ahead and pick the first points to be the sub 1s. Doesn't actually matter. It's just time setting it up. So then, for my equation of m equals, so my y sub 1 value is 6 minus my y sub 2 value, which is 0. Then I'll divide that by my x sub 1 value, which is 0, minus my y sub, sorry, x sub 2 value, which is negative 2. Okay, the parentheses are really important. Why? Because see that double negative there? We want to make sure that we see that. We don't accidentally write the negative just once. I have seen that happen a lot with students. So a way to avoid that would be to make sure to use your parentheses. Okay, so then we have m. So 6 minus 0 is 6 all over. 0 minus negative 2 would be a positive 2. Which means that m equals 6 divided by 2, 3. So that's the slope for a red line. And we used the formula to find that. So now, instead of the formula for the blue line, we are going to go ahead and use, oh, I forgot to mention that up here. M is equal to rise over run, which is the same as change of y over change of x. That's the formula. Sorry about that. Rise over run. So we're going to go ahead and count out the rise over run. And you might say, well, which point do I start from? Should I start from the 0, 3, or should I start from the 12, 0? I'll go ahead and show you that both options, whichever one you start from, works out. Just a little different in the beginning. So let's go ahead and start with the first option of starting from 0, 3 and working our way down to 12, 0. So for rise over run, that's going to equal, well, let's go ahead and count our x values. I'm sorry, our y values. Well, notice, for our y values, we actually have to head downwards in order to get to that point over here. So we have to head one, two, three points down. Since we went down, that's going to be a negative value for my y's. And then we have to move a positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve points to the other direction. But that was forward, so that's going to be a positive twelve. And then we can simplify that, 3 and 12, that simplifies to negative fourth. All right, let's go ahead and do the other version. Still doing rise over run, but this time, I'm going to go ahead and start from the 12, 0, and go to the 0, 3. Once again, I'm showing you this because it doesn't matter which way you decide to go. Okay, so, for the 12, 0, let's see. I could go ahead and count up and then back to get to 0, 3, or I could count this way and up to get to 0, 3. Doesn't matter as long as I move up and then straight across or down and straight forward. Either way matters. Or either way doesn't matter, sorry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose to go up first for the 12. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, positive 3. So that'll be a positive 3 on the top, divided by, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oops, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Ooh, but I went backwards 12. That should be a negative 12. So 3 divided by 12 is going to be that fourth, and we still have that negative, so we get a negative fourth. And what do you know? Our answer is the exact same slope. So it doesn't matter if I started from the 0, 3 and went to the 12, 0, or the other direction. And in fact, if you had picked this point here, which is 4, 2, and you tried to count out your slope, you will find out you'll still end up with negative fourth as your slope. It's as long as you pick two slopes, or sorry, two points that are on your line and you count, then you'll get the correct slope. Okay, so those are the two methods for finding slope. Let's take a look at example two. Find the slopes of the following lines, then graph each line. Okay, so notice what is something that we are given for these lines. They are all equations. Okay, so we can't count rise over run, and we can't use the two points to find our slope. What option does that leave us with? 
this one right here. We got to use the equation, got to solve for y and find the value by x. So, for a, what would be our slope? Well, it's already in the y equals mx plus b form, so we'll just take the number right near x, which is a fourth. So m equals one fourth. Okay. But I want to graph each of these lines, and remember for graphing, I need three points. So the one awesome thing about the slope is you can use the slope to find another point. So all I need to do for a is to find two more points. Well, let's go ahead and find the intercepts, right? Because those are two points. So for my x-intercept, set y to 0. So that means 0 equals 1 fourth x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. We have negative 2 equals a fourth x. Okay, got to get rid of that fourth. So we'll multiply by the reciprocal of 4 over 1. And then... Let's see, 4 over 1. Oops, my pen got hit. Okay. So that'll be 4 times negative 2 over 1. So that'll be negative 8 equals, and those fourths cancel, and we're left with x. So the x-intercept is negative 8. Now for the y-intercept. Set x to 0 and solve. So y is going to equal 1 fourth times 0 plus 2. That goes to 0, and we're left with y equals positive 2. Okay, let's go ahead and graph that line first before we start plopping down any of the other values. So we have negative 8, 0, and 0, 2. I'll go ahead and graph this in green. Negative 8, 0, and what was that? 0, 2. But remember, we need three points, so how do we find the third point? Well, as I mentioned before, we can use the slope because we know the slope describes the way I get from point to point on my line. So my slope is a fourth. And what does that mean? Well, since we have a positive one, that means we're going to move up one on the y values. And positive four means we're going to move right four on the x values. But where do I start from? Well, you're going to start from either this point or this point. It does not matter. We're not going to start from the origin. We're starting from a point on the line. So I'll go ahead and start from the negative 8, 0. So I'm going to need to move up 1. Boop. Over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there we go. And what point is that? That is negative 6, 1. And then I'll go ahead and graph in my line ooh, as best I can. If you're doing this um, on a piece of paper, it would be good to use a straight edge. All right, so we did the first one. Hallelujah. All right, now the second one. Um, I need to find the slope first. You know what? That's not in the right format. I need y by itself. And at the moment, I have 2x plus 2y. So I need to solve for y to be able to find my slope. So let's go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. Oops, sorry. 2x from both sides. Now you might say, well, how come we can't just pull that negative 2 from the x and that's our slope? The thing is, is it's not in the right format yet. It needs to be in the right format, and then you can pull the number from the x. So we can't jump the gun there. Okay, divide both sides by 2, and we get that y equals negative x. This isn't quite in the right format, though, right? Because y equals mx plus b, we need the b value. And I don't see a number here. Well, don't worry, it's, that's just 0. 0 is just hanging out there, we don't always have to write it. If you don't see it, you can just write plus zero. Okay, so what's my slope? Well, it's the number by x. I don't really see a number, but I know that the number there that exists is that negative one. So m equals negative one. Now let's go ahead and find our intercepts. So the y-intercept is actually easier to find. I just take the b value, right? So that'll just be zero, zero. And then the x-intercept is a little harder to find. So notice, I didn't use this shortcut for winding the y-intercept earlier. I went through all of the motions to find it, but it still ended up being the number at the end. So you can skip this long calculation step if you're already in y-intercept form, and then you just take your b-value for right there. Ooh, sorry, that arrow went a little off-kilter. All right. 
back to what we were doing. X-intercept, set y to zero, and solve. So we have, I'm gonna go ahead and use this equation right here. Zero equals negative x, dividing both sides by that negative one, and we get zero equals x. Okay, so my y-intercept and my x-intercept end up being the exact same number. That doesn't actually help me. But let's go ahead and graph this first. So x-intercept, y-intercept is at zero, zero. But I need three points for my line. I only have one. Well, don't worry. That's what our slope is for. The slope is here to save the day. This is negative one over one, which means my y values go down one for the y, and I go right one for the x because of that negative and because this is positive. Down run, right one. Okay, let's do that. Down one, right one. That'll be at this point here, which is one, negative one. And let's do one more. Down one, right one. That's at two, negative two. Alrighty, let's go ahead and graph in that line. Sign out the straightest. There we go. Ooh, we're supposed to label these. Y equals negative X, and the other one was Y equals a fourth X plus two. All right, two more to go. X equals eight. Ah, I recognize that. That's that weird type of a line where it's a vertical line because we only have our X values. So this is vertical line. which means all x values are eight. So where is eight? Eight is five, six, seven, eight. Eight is right here. So I know the point um, eight, zero exists on this, and then I can just pick any other random point I want. But the question here is what is my slope? Before I do that, let me just go ahead and fill out these points. Okay, so I've, I've plotted my three points for my graph, found those easily because I just pick a random y value, does not matter, I just know my x is always going to be 8. So now I need to figure out what the slope is for this line. Um, we don't have points, and we have the equation, but notice for this equation, I need the value by x if I can get my equation into y equals mx plus b form. But I can't do that with my equation because I don't have a y. So that method doesn't work. I can't use this method. Oh, sorry, y1, x1, minus x2. Well, actually, I could try this method. Or I could... Nah, you know what? Let's go ahead and try that method. Because we do have at least two points, right? Let's go ahead and choose 8, 5, and 8, 0. Then we go ahead and erase this. Let's choose this method. Uh, waiting for my pen to load. There we go. Okay, so I said I want the points 8, 5. So I'll go ahead and do x1, x, or y2. Sorry, x1, y1. x2, y2. And plug those in. So my x1 was 8 minus 8. And my y1 was... 5 minus 0. So m is going to equal 5 over 8 minus 8 is 0, and ooh, we have a 0 in a fraction. So one of two options. Either this equals 0, or this is undefined. Do you remember? Well, I have a number over 0, which spells out no can do. So this is actually undefined. So for a vertical line, they don't have a slope. Another way to think of it is, it's a vertical line. It should have the steepest slope in the world. It should have the largest number in the world. Do you know what the largest number in the world is? No, I don't either, right? There's an infinite number of uh, numbers in the world. So it's undefined. So a vertical line, the slope is undefined. There is no actual number we can have for a vertical line. Strange lines. Okay, let's take a look at the next line for D. Y equals negative five. Okay, since it only has that one variable, we know it's one of the weird lines. 
This is the horizontal line, where my y values, it's a horizontal line, where all y values are negative 5. Does not matter what the x values are, y's are negative 5. Let's go ahead and just graph that. Okay, negative 5. Doesn't matter what the x values is, y's are negative 5. I'm just going to pick random points with a y value of negative 5. 0, negative 5, 5, negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. And draw those in as straight as possible with my beautiful arrowheads. Once again, arrowheads are important and will be considered part of the grading process on exams. Okay, so we have graphed our line and we have three points. Awesome, check, check, check. We don't have the slope yet. So how should I find the slope? Well, there are a few different ways you could think of it. Um, we could say we could try to get their, our equation into y equals mx plus b form. We have our number b, but we don't have an x. So where's the x? Well, you could be creative and say that this is 0 times x minus 5, which means our slope is 0. Now, if that way is a little too abstract for you, let's just go ahead and use the same formula that we had for the problem um, C. Let's go ahead and calculate out the slope. Y1 minus Y2 all over X1 minus X2. Pick random points. I'll go ahead and pick this point and this point. So this is my Y1, sorry, my X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So my X1 is negative 5 and my X2 is 0. And then my y1 was negative 5 and my y2 was negative 5. So that's going to equal negative 5 minus negative 5 will be a positive. So a negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Divided by a negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5. Ooh. We have that weird case once again where we have a 0 in a fraction. So this is either 0 or undefined. Well, this is 0 over a number, which means on, you can go on to 0. So our answer is 0. And our slope is 0, just like we found earlier. Okay, so that goes to say, the slopes of horizontal lines are always going to equal 0, and the slopes of vertical lines are always going to be undefined. That will always be the case. All right, let's take a look at something called parallel and perpendicular lines. Once again, I'm just giving the basic concept behind it. If you want these specific definitions, please read your books. All right, so a parallel and a perpendicular line. First off, let's get a visual. Parallel lines are lines that run right next to each other. They're heading in the same direction, so much so that they never cross each other. They're always just right next to each other. Perpendicular lines do cross each other, and they cross each other once, at a very interesting angle, they cross each other perfectly at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so this is parallel. One way to in, uh, notate, notate it is the two lines. Perpendicular is notated with that little upside down T. So parallel, perpendicular. Another thing to note, parallel lines, since they're moving at the exact same speed or the exact same rate, they have the same exact slope. Now perpendicular lines, perpendicular, perpendicular lines have, well, they're not the same slope. And there is a way to prove this. Uh, if you'd like to know that, come by an office hour. But perpendicular lines have opposite, I'm going to go ahead shorthand it, opposite and reciprocal slopes. So, if you have a slope like m, a line that's perpendicular to it will have a slope that's the opposite, so it'd be a negative m, and the reciprocal, so it'd be 1 over m. All right, example three. Determine whether the two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. All right, so the best thing to do whenever you're with this kind of a problem is to think about what it means for a line to be parallel, what it means for it to be, to be perpendicular, and what it means for it to be neither. Well, to be parallel, remember they need to have the same slope. To be perpendicular, their slopes need to be exactly the opposite and reciprocal. So the best thing to do would be to find the slopes of these two lines and then compare them. So 
let's go ahead and do that. So the first line, what are we given? Well, we're given an equation. So how do we find the slope from an equation? Well, we want to get it into the slope intercept form, which means solve for y. So let's go ahead and do that, divide everything by two, and we get y equals three over two x minus three. So what is the slope of this line? Let me go ahead and label that first. So the slope of the first line is gonna equal negative three. Now let's compare that with the other line. I'll go ahead and label it. Once again, labeling is really important in your work. It's a good habit to get into. So the second line, how do we find the slope? Mm, we're not given an equation. What are we given? We're given two points. How do I find the slope when I'm given two points? Oh, I remember. I use this equation or formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and label our values. Once again, it does not matter who you choose to be the sub ones or the sub twos. And let's go ahead and plug those in. So my y sub one is negative two minus my y sub two is zero divided by my x sub one is zero and my y x sub two is negative three. And they get negative two divided by, ooh, we have that double negative on the bottom. So we get positive three. M equals negative two over three. And you know what I just realized is I rewrote my formula wrong, or sorry, I wrote my M wrong for this problem. I don't know why I wrote negative three for M. That should be a three over two. Sorry about that confusion. That is my slope there, three over two. The negative three is my Y intercept, which I don't need right now. Okay, so, ooh, we found the slopes for both of our lines, and now we must compare them. Well, they're not the same, I know that, so they're not parallel. Um, are they opposite reciprocals? Well, if I was to flip 3 over 2 around, that would be 2 over 3. And if I took the opposite, that would be negative 2 over 3. So you know what? These guys are opposite reciprocals, which means they are perpendicular. They are perpendicular lines, which means they cross each other perfectly at a 90 degree angle. You wouldn't need to write that, you just need to write their perpendicular period. Awesome. Now let's take a look at example 4. A hill has a slope of 0 0.05. How many feet in the vertical direction correspond to a run of 50 feet? Let's go ahead and draw a picture here. Well notice this is a slope and it's considered positive, so we know it's going to go uphill, right? We've got a slope going uphill. I'll go ahead and just do a small cutaway. So we've got a hill, right? And we know it's a slope of 0 0.05. So m equals 0 0.05. Now we're told that it has a run of 50 feet. And we want to know how many feet in the vertical direction correspond to that. So we want to know the vertical direction. We don't know why. So we want to know why. And we know our x value, which is 50 feet. And we want to know how these together create the, that um, slope of 0 0.05. So let's just take a look here. We know that the slope should be rise over run, right? Which should equal my rise is y and my run is 50. But that should also equal that 0 0.05 because that's my slope, right? So these should all equal 0 0.05. So if you've noticed, I have created an equation here with these two items. I know they're equal. So y over 50 must equal 0 0.05. Um, I don't really like working with that decimal, so I'm going to go ahead and change that decimal into a fraction that I know. So that would be 5 over how many zeros? 1, 2, 100. Okay, so let's solve for y. How do we get y by itself? We'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 over 50, which is 50 over 1. Those 50s cancel out, and I'm left with y equals 5 over 100 times 50 over 1. Go ahead, simplify out those zeros, and then I'm left with, oh, actually I can simplify that 5 and that 10. 5 goes into itself once, 10 goes into 5, sorry, 5 goes into 10 twice. So you get y equals 5 over 2. So there we go. How many feet in the vertical direction? So we would say 5 over 2 feet in the vertical direction correspond 
to 50 feet. Or to a run of 50 feet. So once again, how did I do this? Well, first things is I looked at the information I was given and I tried to create an equation with it. So I knew that the slope was 0 0.05 and I also know that the slope is technically my y value over my x value. So these things should equal each other. And then I set it up and I was able to solve for my variable. So trying to see if you can find things that are equal to each other is a great way to create an equation. Now let's take a look at example 5. In 2011, global sales of digital cameras totaled 33 billion euros. In 2016, sales totaled 17 billion euros. Find the average rate of change in sales of digital cameras per year. Okay, so what do we want? Well, we want to compare the year and the sales. So we're going to create a point that has the years and then the amount of sales or total sales. So we have two different points that create that. We have 2011 has this many sales. And in 2016, we have this many sales. So we have two points that we create. So 2011, 33. And 2016, 17. And now we want to find the average rate of change. Well, I can easily find that by using my formula m equals my y1 minus my y2 all over my x1 minus my x2 value. Okay, so my x values, I'll go ahead and set that up, x1, y1, x2, y2. So x1 is 2011 minus the 2016, and then 33 minus the 17. So if you're in Math 82, you need to do the calculations by hand. If you're in Math 103, you can go ahead and use your calculator for this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it by hand, though, for my Math 82 students. So 33 minus 17. Let's see, how many times can 7 subtract from 3? We can't, so we have to borrow from that 3, that's 13. So that'll be 6. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. So that'll be 16 over, actually let me change that pen color back. And then we have to do the subtraction for the 2011 and the 2016. Well the difference there is 5 years, right? From 2011 to the 2016 is 5 years. But we're going down, so that's going to be negative 5. So we have negative 16 over 5. And as usual, you can answer as a fraction in my course, as long as it is a simplified fraction. So what would my answer be? The average rate of change in sales of digital cameras is negative 16 over 5 cameras per year. So what does it mean when it's a negative? Negative means it's going downhill, right? Which means my sales should be going downhill if my um, slope is negative. And that makes sense, right? In 2011, they had 33 sales, 33 billion, sorry. In 2016, they had 17 billion. It is going downhill. So that matches the concept that we have a negative slope. All right, and that is it for this section. If you have any questions on any of this work, once again, please join me for my office hours.